Hey, what's going on, Dodgers Nation? D-Mac here, and today we've got 42 fascinating facts that every Dodgers fan needs to know about Jackie Robinson. And I want to know from you guys, in three words or less, what did Jackie Robinson mean to the game of baseball? Let me know down below in the comments section. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. Jackie Robinson was born in Georgia, but raised in Southern California. Jack Roosevelt Robinson, the grandson of a slave and the son of sharecroppers, was born in Cairo, Georgia in 1919. Shortly after his birth, his family moved and settled in Pasadena, California. Jackie Robinson got his middle name after Teddy Roosevelt. President Theodore Roosevelt, who passed away 25 days before Robinson was born, was the inspiration for his middle name. Jackie was the youngest of five children. He had three brothers named Edgar, Frank, and Matthew, and a sister named Willa May. Jackie Robinson wasn't the only athlete in the family. His brother, Mac Robinson, won a silver medal in the 1936 Olympic Games. Mac Robinson took home the silver in the 200 meters behind the legendary sprinter Jesse Owens during the 1936 Summer Olympics in Berlin, Germany. Jackie Robinson attended John Muir Technical High School in Pasadena, California. California, where he was a four-sport star and played on a team with other future Hall of Famers, Ted Williams and Bob Lemon. Robinson made the Pomona Annual Baseball Tournament All-Star Team with fellow future MLB Hall of Famers, Ted Williams of the Boston Red Sox and Bob Lemon of the Cleveland Indians. Jackie Robinson was a four-sport star in college, first at Pasadena Junior College, where he played football, baseball, basketball, and competed in track and field. He made national headlines after leaping 25 feet and six and a third inches in the long jump. Duke Snyder, who would later become Robinson's Brooklyn teammate, recalled once seeing Jackie leave a game during a junior college baseball game in the middle of an inning to go compete in the long jump while still in his baseball uniform only to return to the baseball game as if nothing unusual had happened. Jackie would go on to attend UCLA, where he was a four-sport star for the Bruins. On the gridiron, Robinson averaged 12.24 yards per carry as a wingback in 1939, leading the Bruins to their first unbeaten season in school history. He was also great on the hardwood, averaging 12.4 points per game, but he wasn't so great on the diamond. Baseball was his weakest sport at UCLA. Now, he did have a great debut, where he went four for four and stole four Four bases, including home, but he would go on to hit just 97 in his first and only baseball season in Westwood, prompting many to regard it as his weakest sport. Jackie Robinson served in the Army during World War II. In 1942, Jackie Robinson was drafted into the Army. He was assigned to a segregated Army Cavalry unit in Fort Riley, Kansas. While at Fort Riley, Robinson became close friends with boxing legend Joe Lewis when the heavyweight used his celebrity status to protest the delayed entry of black soldiers in an office candidate school. As a result, Robinson was commissioned as a second lieutenant in 1943. Jackie Robinson never saw combat during the war because he was arrested and court-martialed for refusing to move to the back of an unsegregated bus. Robinson was ultimately acquitted and then assigned to Camp Breckenridge in Kentucky. That's where he served as an Army athletics coach until he was given an honorable discharge in 1944. In 1945, Jackie Robinson joined the Kansas City Monarchs of the Negro Leagues. He was paid $400 a month, about $5,100 in today's money to play shortstop where he hit 387 with 14 doubles, 5 home runs, 13 stolen bases in 67 games. Jackie's outstanding season would earn him a spot on the Negro League All-Star team in his first and only season playing for Kansas City. On April 10th, 1947, Jackie Robinson signed his first major league contract with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Brooklyn Dodgers executive branch Ricky handpicked Robinson because he felt he had the inner strength to deal with the hostility of being the first African-American player in Major League history. Robinson once asked Ricky, Mr. Ricky, do you want a ball player who was afraid to fight back? And Ricky famously responded with, I want a ball player with guts enough not to fight back. You want a player who doesn't have the guts to fight back? No. No. I want a player who's got the guts not to fight back. 
Jackie Robinson made his MLB debut at Brooklyn's Ebbets Field on April 15, 1947, and became the first African-American baseball player in Major League history. Jackie Robinson was 28 when he made his MLB debut. Now, not every member of the Brooklyn Dodgers welcomed Jackie Robinson with open arms. Dodgers outfielder Dixie Walker started a petition to have Jackie Robinson removed from the roster. Some of the Southern-born Dodgers actually signed it, but when manager Leo DeRosha heard about the petition, he chastised Walker in front of the team. After that moment, the petition lost all of its momentum, and Walker asked to be traded. Brooklyn eventually acquiesced to his demands and traded him to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Dodgers star shortstop Pee Wee Reese made a statement by standing up for Robinson. After Jackie received an onslaught of racial slurs and death threats from a hostile crowd in Cincinnati, Dodgers star shortstop Pee Wee Reese had seen enough. Reese went over to Robinson, put his arm around his shoulder, and was heard loudly saying, this is the guy and we're going to win with him. Jackie won the first ever Rookie of the Year award. At the end of his first season in 1947, Robinson was named the winner of the inaugural Baseball Writers Association of America's Rookie of the Year award. Jackie hit 297, hit 12 home runs, 31 doubles, 5 triples, led the league with 29 stolen bases, and had 48 RBIs in 151 games. On August 29, 1948, Jackie hit for the backward cycle in the Dodgers' 12-7 win over the St. Louis Cardinals. Robinson homered in the first, tripled in the fourth, doubled in the sixth, and singled in the eighth to complete the extra rare reverse cycle. He was selected to seven all-star teams in his legendary 11-year career, six in Major League Baseball, and one in the Negro Leagues. He received MVP votes in each of his first seven seasons. He won the 19. 19- 49 National League MVP and what is still considered to be one of the best seasons ever for a second baseman. Robinson hit 342 with 66 extra base hits and 37 stolen bases. And since then, no players put up a season where they've had a batting average above 340, had more than 65 extra base hits and more than 35 stolen bases. In his 1949 MVP campaign, Robinson had a 432 on base percentage. That was good for second in the senior circuit. He had 203 hits. That was good for second. And he was seventh in walks with 86. Also, 38 of his 203 hits came with runners in scoring position. And he's the last second baseman to record 200 plus hits and 80 plus walks. He led the league twice in stolen bases. Once in 1947 where he swiped 29 bases and once in 1949 where he swiped 39. He finished his career with exactly 200 stolen bases. Jackie Robinson stole home an amazing 19 times during his illustrious career. Most famously, he stole home in Game 1 of the 1955 World Series versus the Yankees. With Brooklyn down by two runs in the eighth inning, Robinson broke for home and just got under the tag from the Hall of Fame catcher, Yogi Berra. Robinson finished his 11-year professional baseball career with a 313 batting average, a 410 on base percentage, a 477 slug percentage, and an 887 OPS. He had 141 home runs, he had 286 doubles, 55 triples, and 200 stolen bases. And to this day, despite playing in just 10 MLB seasons, Robinson ranks fifth all-time in total war for the Dodgers at 61.8 war, and his 7-2-2 war per 162 games is the best in team history. He played in six World Series with the Dodgers, winning his last one against the Yankees in 1955. Long before the movie 42 came out, Jackie Robinson played himself in the Jackie Robinson story, a biopic about his life released in 1950. Robinson spent his off seasons doing speaking engagements in the South. These tours were so successful that Jackie actually made more money on the tours than he did with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Jackie Robinson was traded to the rival Giants at the end of his career. On December 13, 1956, the Brooklyn Dodgers traded Robinson to the New York Giants for pitcher Dick Littlefield and $30,000. 
But instead of continuing his baseball career with the Giants, Robinson decided to retire and take a job with Chalk Full of Nuts. Robinson sent a letter to Giants owner Horace Stoneman where he stated his intentions to leave baseball to work for the coffee maker. Robinson wrote, After due consideration, I have decided to request to be placed on the voluntary retired list as I'm going to devote my full time to business opportunities that have been presented. I assure you that my retirement has nothing to do with my trade to your organization. As the vice president of personnel for Chalk Full of Nuts Coffee, he became the first African-American vice president of a major American corporation. In 1962, in his first year of eligibility, Jackie Robinson was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame, becoming the first African-American in history to get the call from Cooperstown. Robinson was also the first African-American baseball television analyst. He broadcasted for ABC's MLB Game of the Week telecast in 1965 and would later work as a part-time commentator for the Montreal Expos in 1972. On June 4, 1972, the Dodgers retired Jackie Robinson's number 42 on the same day as Sandy Koufax's number 32 and Roy Campanella's number 39. Robinson was a very powerful figure in the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was quoted as saying that Jackie was a legend and a symbol in his own time who challenged the dark skies of intolerance and frustration. President Ronald Reagan posthumously awarded Jackie Robinson with the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1984, and then in 2005, President George W. Bush posthumously awarded Robinson with the Congressional Gold Medal. In 1999, Jackie Robinson was voted to Major League Baseball's All-Century Team, and then finally, on April 15, 1997, MLB Commissioner Bud Selig declared that Robinson's number 42 would permanently be retired throughout all of Major League Baseball. Players who were wearing number 42 at the time were allowed to wear the number for one more season, and the New York Yankees closer Mariana Rivera was the last active player to wear number 42. To this day, it's still the first and only time a jersey number has been retired throughout an entire professional sports league. No one is allowed to wear his number 42 jersey ever except on April 15th each season to commemorate the day Robinson broke the color barrier back in 1947. To celebrate Jackie Robinson Day, every player in Major League Baseball wears number 42. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. In three words or less, what has Jackie Robinson meant to the game of baseball? And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.